Okay, now we're going to move on to talking about the stun shot. And the stun shot is the most important shot in pool because it's where we, the only time we know for certain where the cue ball is going to travel. So, start with what is a stun shot? A stun shot is basically going to be any shot where the cue ball has no rotational force at the moment of impact. So it has no spin at the moment that we hit our object ball. So using one of these elephant aim trainer balls, I'm going to hit it and it might start with a little bit of backspin. That backspin will wear off at the moment it hits the 11 ball. And in this instance, I'm setting it up straight in. So all the energy will get transferred from this cue ball to my 11 ball and my cue ball will stop. And it should stop. Now, there's, I can combine how hard I hit it, how much backspin I have to get this. So I can hit it slow with a lot of backspin to stop it. Or I could hit relatively firm with less backspin to get it to stop. Those become important as we move into controlling the ball going somewhere else. Now, I'm going to move from straight in to over on this side. So I'm going to cut the ball to the left. Now, what happens if I hit it so there's no spin at the moment of impact? What's going to happen is we've got this ghost ball aim trainer on the table and it's pointing right at the camera. So this is our stun line. Our cue ball will travel down that line after impact. So once again, I gotta hit a stun shot. And I'll hit kind of a medium speed stun shot. The ball should travel pretty much right down that line towards the pocket. It doesn't matter what angle, as long as I'm on this side, I can have a relatively thin cut. If I hit it the same way, it's gonna go down that same line. very close to the corner pocket. What you will notice is the closer I am to straight in with a stun shot, that cue ball is going to travel slower. The thinner a cut, more energy is going to stay in the cue ball. So when I was relatively straight in, it didn't travel as far. If I come over here with a thin cut, now that cue ball is going to be moving faster than the 11 ball but it still goes down that same line. Any variance that you're actually seeing is maybe a little inconsistency with where I'm hitting it. I might be hitting it ever so slightly one or two degrees off to one direction or the other. Now, so it doesn't matter where I shoot. From this side, that ball is gonna go down the stun line towards the camera. If I come on the other side of the shot, it's gonna go down the stun line the other direction. So it's good to learn how to hit stun shots at different speeds because if I have a relatively straight in shot and I want the cue ball to travel a long ways, I might have to hit a hard stun shot. To get it to go down to the end of the table. If I don't want it to go very far from the same spot, I might have to hit a soft stun shot. goes half the way down. So I combine how hard I hit it with how much backspin to get different results. So you can use this for basic position play to be able to move around the table. Now what happens if I start applying English or spin to the ball? First of all, side spin is going to make almost no difference until I hit a rail. But follow or draw are going to make a difference. So, if I start out with my straight shot, and I do a draw shot, so my cue ball is spinning backwards at the moment of the impact, that's draw. Now, I'm going to transfer my forward force into the 11 ball, and that spin is going to grab the friction and start backing up towards me. So that's how I get a draw shot. If I want to go forward, straight in, 
I can basically hit it high on the ball and my cue ball will be rolling, spinning like this, and it's gonna pause and then the friction is gonna take over and it'll follow a little on the ball. Now, if I want to use this to change the path of a stun shot, so now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna be at about 15 degree cut angle. I'm gonna set it up the same way. This ghost ball in trainer has little pie slices on it and I can change my thing. So each little pie slice is like 15 degrees. There's a couple heavy lines on these if you look them up online, the ghost ball aim trainers. Those mark 30 degree shots. So I'm gonna be at 15 degrees and now I'm gonna hit a follow shot. And what you're gonna see is I'm gonna hit it relatively hard and the cue ball is gonna start down the stun line and then it's gonna curve forward to the stun line because it's follow. It's gonna have that spin going forward. So it started a few inches and then curved forward into that rail. If I use that same cut angle, so I'm at 15 degrees again, at least very close, I'm gonna do a backspin shot and it's gonna start down this line again and then the friction is gonna take over and it's gonna bend backwards towards me. When I'm relatively straight, this effect is pronounced. As I move down a little bit and I get closer to 30 degrees, now I can still make this happen, but it's not gonna happen nearly as much. So I will do a follow shot. And it went a little bit down the line and then it curved forward. But you notice before I was hitting the rail over here, now it went all the way down to the end rail. So at 30 degrees, withdraw the backspin. Kind of did the same thing. It went down a little bit and then it curved back and now it hit the rail the first time it was scratched in the pocket, side pocket. Now let's go back and let's talk a little bit about how speed is important. So I'm gonna go back to, the, as I get a thinner and thinner cut, um, this impact isn't as pronounced. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go actually kind of in the middle. I'm going to go between that 15 and 30 degree cut just to kind of demonstrate speed. All right, so I'm going to do a relatively solid follow shot and it's going to squirt down this line a little bit before that follow takes over. And the harder I hit it, the follow further it's going to go down that line. Now if I hit it softer, what you're gonna see is that ball isn't gonna go as far and the follow or the spin is gonna make a bigger impact on that ball. So it curved much faster and then eventually it runs out of follow and just rolls straight down whatever line it's following. If I do draw, kind of the same thing. If I hit it fairly hard, it's going to travel further down that line before it starts to curve off of that line. If I hit it soft with draw, it's going to happen a little bit faster. But it's always going to start down that line. So what we're basically doing is we're talking about the two forces. The forward force is what's taking it down the line. The rotational force is changing where that ball is going to go.